Are you a content creator looking for effects to bring your videos to a whole new level? Welcome to Production Crate. Production Crate is the resource for graphics, visual effects, music, and much more. On top of that, these assets are compatible with your editing software. Get your unlimited free effects today or premium effects for only $49 a year. Make it awesome. What is poppin' guys? Welcome back to a brand new video. In this Vegas Pro 18 tutorial, I'm gonna show you guys exactly how to create a better workflow. I'm gonna give you guys five tips you can use, for example, to save time, work more efficiently, you know, get things done quicker as the way you're getting it done now. My cameraman actually brought me into this idea, so big shout out to him, and I would say, let's get started with creating a better workflow in Vegas Pro 18 right after the intro. All right, guys, so as you can see right now, we are in Vegas Pro 18. So the five tips I'm gonna give you guys today are actually not really in like the order that you should apply them on. But the first thing is actually a really, really great handy tip that I have been using for years when I've been started uploading, you know, regularly and, you know, consistently with like an upload schedule. So let's go ahead and start off with the very first tip. <laughs> What I always do when I'm making videos, even the one that you're watching right now, it is edited in a template. So I'm gonna give you guys some behind the scenes stuff, a project you have, probably haven't seen yet. So what I always do is when I transferred all the files onto my computer, I never start from scratch. I never import my footage, you know, drag in the subscribe overlay, that, you know, that thumbs animation, the background music, my outro, everything is always pre-made. And let me show you guys what I mean by that. Okay, so every time I'm ready for editing a project, right here I have project Vegas Pro 18.veg. If I open up that project, it's going to boot up Vegas Pro. And right now, I'm going to show you guys what I always do in order to speed up my editing. Because let's be honest, if you have a ton and ton of, for example, like assets and all that in your videos, such as overlays and all that, it's going to take so much time if you have to import that all from scratch. So this is basically my template that I always use to open and where I edit my videos in. So this is, of course, that production crate trailer that you guys have seen in the intro. And then and I have my sound effects right here, which is called this quick fade in, you know, when I'm doing my intro. So then right here, I have all these things pre-made, such as my name overlay, as you can see if I play that back for you guys. So right here, I have my name overlay just ready to overlay on the actual video. And then, of course, if I move on a little further in the timeline, we have my subscribe and all that notification and, you know, pop-up that I'm overlaying onto my camera footage. We have that thumbs up animation going. And of course, this is my intro. So of course, these are things that are just really, really handy to make actually a workflow, just going into your files, open up your standard template, and then just start editing. And also just at the very end right here, I also have my outro, just ready, you know, to be inserted into my outro clip. These are actually a couple things that you can insert into your project, such as your, you know, your social media overlay. If I skip through it right here, I have my Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. And that is just a really, really quick way to save a lot of time because you're going to spend hours and hours if you need to make your videos look exactly the same. And they're not going to look the same. There's always going to be, you know, a thing that's going to be different if you have to do everything from scratch. So just go ahead and insert it. Just make a template for, call it, for example, you know, template open this one dot VEG or whatever name you want to give it and that's actually really really important really handy and that's how your videos can stay the same and look the same and there's nothing more to it actually so the only thing that i cannot prepare beforehand in a template is the background music because i want to have it differently in every single video otherwise everything is going to start sounding the same so that's one thing that i cannot you know make as in like a pre kind of you know preparement for uh, the video so that's why i would recommend just choose a song a new one from your computer i would just recommend downloading like this entire 
their NCS playlist. I have this folder with contains like two to three hundred NCS songs I can choose from from time to time, just to you know keep things sounding different a little bit. So that's the only thing I cannot put into a template. But for the rest of it, the pre-intro, my actual intro right here, my outro, and all these overlays, my name right here, the, so the subscribe, and my social media, everything is just pre-made there, and that's just a really really good thing to make your videos look exactly the same. So let's move on to the second tip. The second one is pretty straightforward. It's actually arranging tracks. Now, the cool thing is that Vegas Pro is built in such a way that the track on top of something is always going to be visible. So let's say that you have your trailer right here. If I'm going to overlay multiple video and effects on that, you know, on the, on the track above this one right here that I'm highlighting right now, which is the track of that intro, everything is going to be visible above that. So if you're going to have, for example, a video and you place it, for example, on this track below Below that one it's not going to be visible and that's a really really good way how you can arrange tracks I would create every single track separately whether it's for your name it is actually recommended to make multiple tracks because of course I can actually you know place this name lower third this subscribe button and this thumbs up on one single track problem is that this one is in the left right here and this one is centered so then I have to go ahead and mess with like the event pan crop just doesn't work because it's gonna cut off halfway so what I would do is just create a new single video track for every single asset whether it's for your name or for social media or the subscribe lower third because that's just the way it works and then you can go to this icon the track motion and you can just position them anywhere on the screen separately without the position of this one for example also going along it's really really handy if you, if you arrange tracks and make sure that all the video tracks are for example on top of your entire interface and then all the music the sound effects your intro music your outro music are below all the video tracks such as this one is right here my intro song is below that one I have my quick whoosh sound effect below that one I have then subscribe overlay and all the clicking from when that mouse hits this thumbs up icon and it's also very self-explanatory that all the audio tracks are always below the video tracks because of course if you want to if I drag this guy up you can have your audio above your video but that's just not a natural thing in my eyes because I'm just so used to it for almost 10 years now having the audio tracks at the very bottom of the screen and then all the video tracks, whether it's the regular video or the camera footage, you know, all these visuals on top of it. So it's actually pretty straightforward. All right, so let's move on to the second tip, which actually involves these colors. Okay, so you can work with colors. So let's say that we're gonna give all the tracks of the audio, we're gonna get that blue. So we're gonna double check on it. So this is also audio from my actual intro. So if I go to the left of that track, it is dark red. So we're gonna right click on it. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna click track display color and we're gonna set one to light blue. Now this is also audio, production crate trailer audio. So we're gonna right click on it. Of course, track display audio, set that to blue. And then this one is subscribe sound. That's also audio, set that one to light blue this is going to be the outro sound we're going to also put that one to blue because if we look on the left right now we see like all right this one that one that one that one and that one are just blue they're audio you're not even worrying about it because you're not going to put in like video clips on that audio track and then of course starting from here we can give all visual parts we can give this like this gold color so we're going to right click on here then we're going to click on track display color i mean select that one so we know that all right starting from here this is all audio the blue one Ones, and then these gold yellowish colors are video tracks and that's really simple and that's how you can scroll through it you don't have to you know go ahead and for example do it like that because right now it's optimized because I don't really work with colors because I know literally after so many years where every part is so I don't have to you know use colors I just know it out of the top of my head but that's just a really really cool thing that you can customize it on the left right here and it's going to be really really easy to arrange these all right so let's move on to the next tip which is actually my favorite one <laughs> So making presets and saving them and using them is actually the most effective one out of all of these tips. Because let's say that no matter it is what preset, whether it is a certain position of an overlay or a lower third inside the screen, like at the bottom, on the left or on the right, or it is a render preset, you know, so you don't have to go over the settings before you render every single time. You can just pick your preset or whether it's a color grading filter so your videos will always look the same. Presets are just so easy. So let's, if I go to, 
for example, the video effects tab. If I go to the L where it says LUT filter, if I click on there, I have a lot of LUT filters, around 10 of them, not too much, but just enough to choose from, right? So then I named them and I gave them all the different numbers. So the one that I always use that are all my videos are is number A. So if I know that, of course, if, if I'm gonna create some sort of like a montage, I know I can, for example, pick number one or the orange and teal one, but I always use number eight. I don't have to drag on the default and then go through all of these 10 LUT filters separately and see, all right, which is the good one. You know, this is just a preset that I always drag on my videos. I just have my video graded in five seconds. I can just go to the LUT filter menu. I pick number eight, I drag it onto the clip. And that is basically how I do that. And actually I also grade my entire clip before I have made any cuts. So I just drag in the raw file of my camera, not my screen recording because that doesn't need a lot of filters, but just the footage of my camera, then it is graded. And then I know if I start cutting, every little bit that's cut is gonna be graded. I don't have to worry about it. And so that's a really, really handy thing that I always use. And it's exactly the same for render presets. If I go to file, if I hit render as, of course, I'm gonna pick my format on the left, which is gonna be Sony AVC slash MVC. If I scroll down right here, it says 60 FPS YouTube preset, and I just hit render. I don't have to go ahead and for example, pick internet 1920 by 1080, hit 30p and then hit customize template and then change the frame rate to 60 again and go to the audio and place this guy to 320,000, go to project and then click on best. That's just a really, really handy thing that you can do all that beforehand. And you can just give that a name, for example, YT for YouTube. You hit this diskette icon and you're good to go. There's nothing more to it. And presets are actually so handy, whether it's for render settings, for color grading, you know, for positions on your lower third in the track motion menu. It is just the most handy thing that you can ever imagine. And I think every, every single editor uses presets, whether they're actually self-made or not. All right, guys, so let's move on to the last tip, which is the most important one to get, not get your files all over the place. So I would say, let's get to that one. All right, so as you can see right here, I have this folder where I have a lot of, you know, subfolders as well in it. So I'm not gonna open them because it's actually secret what's in there yet because it's for the documentary. But that's basically what you can also do. So if you go to Vegas Pro, you have your Explorer tab right here. Now it's a very handy thing that if you go, for example, to your external hard drives, for example, this four terabyte one, I can just go into the subfolders and I can actually click on here, for example, downloads, export, extra, plunk, that's actually Dutch for uh, sound. We have uh, music that's also uh, Dutch for music. We have projects. If you're going to transfer all your clips from your SD card onto your computer, you want to just make them in separate folders and then you can just open them up in the Explorer tab in Vegas Pro and then you can just drag in your footage. And also, that's really handy since it might avoid crashing Vegas Pro as well. Because let's say that you shot like 4K footage and you near know, the raw files are like 40 gigabytes. If you're going to drag that into Vegas Pro, these sizes and all that, the frame rates, it might crash Vegas. So if you're going to insert your footage this way by hitting, for example, on the frame. If I open that folder and if I click on Halper Studios right here, we have DD01. That's actually the short title for the days that we're filming. So if I hit, for example, DD04, I can just drag in all the files right here directly into my timeline. And it's going to be a little less heavy for Vegas Pro. So folder structures are so important, guys. And these are basically the five tips I have for you guys to create a better workflow. And that's basically how I also work as well. All right, guys. So that's it for this video. Now you guys know how to, you know, create this better workflow in Vegas Pro 18, work with, you know, templates you have to open up every time you're editing, work with color so you know which one are audio tracks, which one are video tracks, also work with folder structures and of course all the other tips I gave you. If you find this video helpful, make sure to reward it with a like down below. And of course, I want to thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in tomorrow's video as always. So I'll see you guys in the next one.